Hi, Hi folks. folks! Thanks for joining us on this video. If you're new here, I'm Willie. And I'm Sarah. We're a musician and artist who escaped suburbia and now live in a nearly 200 year old cottage on the Isle of Skye in the Scottish Highlands with our dogs, Jack Spaniels, and the newest member of our clan, Puppy Nori. This week, we work on getting Nori settled into his new life here on Skye, including his first trip to the vets. Jack Spaniels absolutely hates going to the vet, but will Nori be the same, or will he take it in his little puppy stride? Plus, I get a much needed respite from the puppy chaos. While I rustle up some hearty Scottish comfort food in the Skylife kitchen, and later on, carry out some essential repairs. Join, Join us, us as we continue. continue. Live in the sky life. with rain but no he is not <laughs> no he's not he's not prepared to can you go with us mister we've come to the vet it's Nori's inoculations final day last vaccination pally eh? or jags as they say in scotland yeah he's got to get his jags last one and then two weeks and Until he's free freedom i guess it's a good thing he's not doing a whittle in the back of the landy but he does it enough in the house you well he'll he do it in, he'll just do it in the vets instead yeah Right, Widdles? Widdles, Mr. Widdles? Widdles? I don't think he's gonna. As I said in the intro, Jack Spaniels really doesn't like going to the vets, but early signs are good that Nori doesn't have that same fear. Well, that was his first time at the vet. He doesn't like being in the back of the Land Rover by himself. He's making more of us now than he did inside the vet. He was perfectly good in the vet. He was really well behaved in the vet, but now he's uh, he's not too keen on being in the crate in the back of the Land Rover. But oh, I'll just get him home now, quickly, and then play with the two dogs till you get back. Yep, I've got to go do the food shop. I'll get going. Yeah. I'll get going. Yeah. Get him home, get playing. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Sarah's shopping for food and I'm back looking after the dogs. We've discovered that you can't actually get any work done at all if you've got to look after both of them at the same time. So I just, I'm just babysitting them for now until she gets back and then we'll put the food away and then we'll get some work done, both of us, because we just take one each. Jack usually comes into my room and Nori goes into Sarah's and then we can just about handle that and get some work done. But two of them together at the same time, trying to do any work, as they would say in The Sopranos. Forget about it. Nori's first trip to the vet was a success. He did whine a bit in the back of the car, but uh, you'll get used to that as well. Trying something new out this morning. Nori's got a Kong toy, which has got a little bit of peanut butter in it and frozen. Which will hopefully keep those sharp little gnashes occupied. Hey pups. I don't know why he's chosen to take it down there. down there. Does this mean I'm going to get some work done this morning? Realise that's highly unlikely. I think he's discovered the peanut butter. Don't worry, I'm not going to take it off you. Hopefully this means he will stop attacking all of my cardboard boxes. Apologies if you get one of these and it bears the mark of a puppy. I think the Kong toy is successfully distracting him. What have you got on your nose, mister? Is that peanut butter? Give me yeah. You like that? Gentle, good boy. Oh. He's snoozing now. 
so I can get on with a bit of packaging, which would be impossible with him running around trying to buy everything. The puppies love cardboard boxes, and especially the nice new cardboard boxes that I have for Etsy. So let's get on with some packaging while he's still asleep. It's those crazy in-between days between Christmas and New Year and the weather outside is absolutely awful. The weather outside is frightful. Anyway, it's time to make some comfort food, I reckon. And my body is pretty much made up of chocolate and alcohol at the minute, so I'm looking to have something a little bit more warming. So I'm gonna make stovies, which is a Scottish classic, and you usually make it with things that you've got lying about. And it just so happens that I've got some leftover sausages. So let's start there. Right, so what I've got here is just some cooked pork sausages, the butcher sausages from Locals. If you can hear that noise, that's Jack sniffing beside me because he heard the word sausages. <laughs> Cooking in the kitchen is going to be very different now when you've got two dogs running around your feet. Fortunately, they can't get up to the counters. Let's cut these up. Right, that's the sausages all chopped up. Next is the onions. Sarah's over there peeling some potatoes. Now this onion is about to be sliced. Right, that's the onions all sliced up. So what I'm gonna do now is just soften these in the bottom of a large pan with a little bit of olive oil in there. So this is the main pan and this is what everything will be getting cooked in. It's all done in one pot. And that noise in the background is a puppy. A little bit of olive oil. And with the onions. Now I like to put in a little bit of salt as well. And the salt makes the water come out of the onions and stops them from going brown. I don't want them to go brown, I want them to be translucent. So this will take a little while for that to cook out. Okay, so that's the onions now softened and what goes in next are potatoes and some water and then mix in some stock cubes, one and a half chicken stock cubes, not beef, controversial, eh? Sarah peeled these potatoes. There they go, pre-boiled water and it goes. One and a half chicken stock cubes. There we go, one and a half chicken stock cubes. Mix it through till they dissolve. Right, so there we go. That is the potatoes in there and the onions and the chicken stock cubes and the water. And I'll bring that up to the boil, put the lid on and let it simmer until the potatoes have softened all the way through. Right, the potatoes are pretty much cooked through now. So what I'm gonna do is pour out the liquid into another pan and rapid boil that and bring it down by at least half, reduce it down. And what that does is it makes it into a sort of basic gravy. You've got the flavor from the stock and also from the onions and the potatoes as well. And that'll thicken a little bit as well. So I'm gonna bring that down by at least half and then the potatoes, well, we'll come to that next. <laughs> So far during this cooking segment, Nori has tried to get behind the bins to eat Jack's food. He has also tried to chew the washing machine tube. He has also tried to bite his brother and tried to get in the cupboard and the dishwasher. We're doing well. Cooking with puppies. <laughs> the potatoes are now done. So I'm gonna pour away most of this liquid. Doesn't matter if a few potatoes fall in there. That's fine. So this goes back in the heat. These go in here. And this pan goes up to rapid boil, whereas this pan comes down to like one. You don't need to mash these potatoes. What you want to do is add this corned beef, which is just chopped up kind of corned beef. I didn't film that because it's not that exciting. And give it a stir through. And what you want the corned beef to do is break up as you stir it. It melts as well. And into there, you add your sausages. Give that a nice stir around. Now I'm going to put that to the side and wait for this to reduce by half. Right, so that's had quite a while now, and it's come right down, it's quite, almost like a gravy. Don't really want any thicker than that, and I'll add that now to the rest of the stovies. The noise in the background of the dogs playing with uh, a string of fake sausages. You having fun boys? I won't be long, just to give me a couple more minutes to make the food, and then I'm all yours. Good boys, that looks like fun. I've got this on a low heat now, I'm just going to put in a little bit of this gravy. See how it looks. Okay, I'll just break up the potatoes a little bit with just a bit of a stabbing motion. That's 
all you really want. You don't want it to be too like mash, you know, you want actual bits of potato in there. That looks pretty good. It's not the most attractive dish you could ever make, but it tastes amazing. This is just a buttered roll and just put it on top generously. And the dogs have come through now. So have a look and see what I'm doing. Once you've got it on your buttered roll, you would put your top on and just eat it as you would like a burger. But I'm going to show you up close what it looks like. It's kind of like corned beef hash and it's really good for a cold day like this. Nice, hearty, delicious food. Mmm. And Jack Spaniels agrees. Sarah's now gone out and she's left me with the dogs and uh, they're now very much after my attention because I've got stovies on a roll. Nori's eating my shoe. If you do make this, let me know. <laughs> mm, mm, so good. After I had my lunch and the dogs had theirs, we retired to the living room for a rest as we waited for Sarah to come home for her share of the stovies. I just had my stovies. I have to be quite quiet because I've got a sleeping puppy on my lap who just bit my lip, actually, which was fun. But I just wanted to say stovies is always plural. It's never called stovey. It's not one stovey and two stovies and so on. It's one stovies. Why? I don't know, but it is. If you were to order in a cafe or something and you said, I'll have a stovey, please, you'd probably get a look like this. So yeah, stovies, not stovey. I'm coming to you from Yolanda, the land of a defender. And I don't know if you can see that, but my breath is steaming because it is freezing cold. It is horrible weather. And I'm heading out from the Glen because I'm having a little afternoon off from the chaos of the puppy and the dog. It's our day off today and I've got a whole pass from Willie. He's taking care of the dogs this afternoon and I'm heading off for a massage. I bet you weren't expecting that. <laughs> There's a lovely lady here on Sky who does massages at Dunvegan. She also does house calls, but the house is absolute chaos at the moment with the puppy and Jack and all the post Christmas stuff as well. So it's nice actually just to get out of the house and go to her and take some me time. This is actually a birthday present. My birthday was back in August and we're now almost in January and it's pretty shocking I've not used it. <laughs> Obviously back in August when I had my birthday Willie had Covid so we couldn't really do much and since then lots of stuff has just happened. Time has run away with us. It's nice to have this opportunity to just take a little bit of time back. I will obviously pay Willie back in kind and make sure he gets some time off as well from the dogs. It's about a 45 minute drive so let's get going. And I decided to do massages instead because it's just feel right to do and I feel literally doing something that I was meant to do. I started as a mobile massage therapist because I didn't have any money or any resources so I started doing mobile massages which is kind of a cheap way to start because you don't need to have a room and then I was really wanting to have my own space where I can make it the way I want it and this came across. I think it's so uh, good for the body to completely relax but I think the most important thing is to let go of your mind and relax on a deeper level so you actually let the muscles to relax. I think people should uh, hug each other more in their real life and you know just spend time with like family and be present. <laughs> you don't need a massage to <laughs> but uh, you know I'm here if you need me. <laughs> That's me all done with my massage. It's such a lovely relaxing space and Bacha is so nice and she's just very chilled out and makes you feel very relaxed. 
and you can still see I think the mark on my head where I had my face in the little hole on the table <laughs> feeling very chilled out right now and hopefully gonna go home and find the boys being just as chilled probably not <laughs> it would have been nice to show you done vegan on a bit of a nicer day but we haven't had many of those recently it's been a bit rubbish the weather there's also something very nice about hearing the wind and the rain battering on the window outside while you're lying there all toasty warm and just incredibly relaxed so it was a very safe and comforting space highly recommend if anyone is on sky and wants to have a massage it's a really really good idea Did you hear a noise? There's a puppy dog. Here's a It could be the case. Oh no! <laughs> oh yeah, oh now we're gonna stand in it. <laughs> yep. Come on, Jack. Jack. Where's mummy? Jack, Jack. Ah, Jackie's fan! They've both boys. been sleeping. Good boys, hello. Hi, Monkey. Oh, thank you. Kisses on the nose. Thank you, yes. Well, at least it wasn't bites on the lip. nice and relaxed. Then you came home to a house full of puppies and dogs and men. And chaos. <laughs> well, How was it? Oh. Um, it was fine until he ow, climbed up and well, he just did ow, he's just biting. <laughs> Give him his toy. Um, it was fine until he bit my lip. Oh. But uh, apart from that, it was all good. He's in the puppy chews and bites everything face. How yeah. did you get on? It was really nice. Thank you for watching the dogs while That's I cool. went and had a little treat. That's all right. Next time it's your turn. I'll look after the dogs and... Well, you might be wondering why Willie's not getting a massage. But keeping him still for longer than 10 minutes is uh, almost as difficult as keeping this puppy still for longer than 10 minutes. <laughs> you like doing things, don't you? Yeah, I'm more of a sort of action-adventure type than uh, lying around. Your kind of mindful escape thing is like fishing, isn't it? Yeah. I'll be looking after the dogs while you're doing that, but we might need the weather to improve before you can do one of your activities. Yeah, the weather's awful at the moment. It's there. Uh, I don't know if we're allowed to say that. You're not allowed to say that. No. And now I'm back home to my boys, my rowdy yeah. boys. Am I not so rowdy boy now? Oh, oh, he's a good boy. Yes. Whilst the other one is shredding his toy. <laughs> <laughs> it's all calm at this end of the sofa. Mmm, stovies. It's probably the most difficult thing to present of all the Scottish dishes. Okay, so it doesn't look very romantic, but it tastes. We shall see. I've been assured that having any kind of vegetables or greenery with this dish is... Well, you might get kicked out of Scotland for it. Tastes a lot better than it looks. And if you were to rate it out of um, 10? Controversially, I think I might prefer it to mince and tatties. Whoa. I don't know, but not as much as haggis, meats and tatties. That is the pinnacle. So, so let's see the numbers. We'll give this a seven. Seven? Mm -hmm. And what about haggis, neeps and ties? Ten, obviously. And what about mince and ties? Uh, mince and ties, it has its place. Um, maybe six for mince and ties. Get out of my house. <laughs> it's my house too. <laughs> <laughs> mince and ties and doughboys. Give them a six. It's sacrilege in this country. Terrible. <laughs> Jack was getting jealous of Nori's little toy, Kong. So we had to get him one. I think they're enjoying them. You enjoying that, mister? Is my whole studio gonna smell like peanut butter now? Been trying to get work done and Nori keeps completely ignoring his toys, including the Kong which I think is no more peanut butter left in it, to try and chew on every bit of cardboard he can find in my studio. I thought I would sacrifice one of my boxes for the greater good to distract him from the ones he's not supposed to chew on. Didn't work. Nori! Nori! <sighs> Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Leave. Leave. 
Good boy. I mean, it's paper tape, so I don't think it's toxic, but still. What about this box? It's like he knows which ones he's supposed to play with and which ones he's not. How tired are you? Tired from a day's destruction. Okay, scratch that. I think I awakened the beast by giving him that box. We have a wooden sort of little fence around our bins and it's to stop the bins from blowing away in high winds. It's got a chain over the front as well. But the farmer's gate, the big metal gate, has been swinging open and hitting this little fence that surrounds our bins. And obviously if it keeps getting hit by a metal gate, it's just falling to pieces. So I've got to fix it and I've chosen the last day of the year to do it. Why not? Well, we're going to do sit around anyway. I may as well get something useful done. Oh yeah, and go into the next year with something positive done too. This is for putting a post in as well, so I'm going to put a post. I think there was one there already. I'm just going to replace the post that was there. So when the gate swings open, it's not going to hit the actual fence. It's just going to hit the post. And that'll hopefully prevent the fence thing that goes around the bins from getting damaged. What is a thing that goes around? <laughs> what do you call that? Okay, so in the interest of practicality, it works. I wouldn't drive down the motorway like this. Definitely not. What do you think, Nori? But I can drive to the end of the farmer's track, I'm sure. I'm just going to tie it up a bit better and then get this job done. Here it is, and you can see the sorry status in. It needs some work, so let's do that. It quickly became apparent that the vertical posts were going to disintegrate before I could properly drive them into the stony ground. A change of plan was needed, so I decided to assemble the frame the best I could as the boards had started to rot too. This was obviously going to be a temporary fix just to see us through until the warmer days. I reused the old boards and cut some new ones too for extra strength. Then I drove the original gate stop post back into its original place. Finally cut and fitted a bracing joist just to add some support. Okay, that's me for this year. A lot of that wood is fairly rotten. I'll get another season out of it I reckon. Then it'll end up being firewood and I'll probably have to build another one of these. I don't mind that, you know. It came with a house and you have to maintain your house. This is just part of it. So happy with the gate stop, happy with the fence thing, whatever it's called. And yeah, I'll replace that probably in a year or two if I need to. It's a beautiful day today on the Isle of Skye. We've had a couple of weeks of really just awful weather, that sideways rain we're always going on about. This is the first nice calm day that the sun's come out for ages. So Willie's out on a nice long walk with Jack and I've got charge of Norrie. We're a week away from him being able to go outside of the cottage boundaries. So his vaccinations will kick in and he won't be at risk so much of the diseases he can catch from other animals in the surroundings. So. He's got Willy's slipper, it's fine. It's not mine. He's very pleased with himself. Nori, no. Good boy. Good boy. No more slipper.
Willie's already done some training with the collar and the lead, but I thought this was a perfect day to do it while Jack's away. I'll try and get Nora used to his lead and being able to walk on it. So I've got a pocket full of treats. I've got a lovely, calm, sunny day outside and hopefully we're going to get some good work done. Leave the slipper. Leave it. Good boy. Good boy, Nori. Ah. Go on then, let's get your collar on. Right. I think you've got a bit bigger. Oh, oh, good boy. Is that nice? Is that okay? I know, I know. It's very fun. It is very fun. Right, shall I try and tie you out first before we put the lead on? Okay, let's do it. I'm so pleased with how that went. It was only about 10 minutes because um, puppies aren't supposed to do more than about 15, 20 minutes exercise at the moment. So we're not trying to tax him too much, but that was really positive. He started following along and I think he was getting it. Hopefully we'll get there and some good lead control with him. Who is this good boy? Who is he? Hey Nori, such a good boy. You're so clever. You're gonna be as clever as Jack, I can tell. Yes, good boy. As always folks, thank you so much for watching our video. We really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please do leave us a like, a comment, or subscribe to our channel if you don't already. It's free to do and it really helps us out. If you did enjoy the video and you'd like to support the channel further, you can do so over on Ko-fi. You can buy us a coffee, or you can buy the wee dogs a treat. Or if you want to help us out more long term, you can join our community over on Patreon, where you get lots of extra content for helping us out each month. All the links to our pages are in the video description. Below. Below. Thanks again for watching and we will see you next week. Woo! Check behind me. Still cool. Still cool. Where am I going to keep going to? This will do. This is fine. That's a bad, bad idea. We're leaving our suburban life, moving over the sea to sky. Are we chasing a dream? I guess in time we will see when we're living the sky life. Living the sky life. I'm looking after these two. Ow! Nori, that hurts! <laughs> that really hurt. <laughs> Ow! We have a wooden sort of, what is it, Robert? cage? What is it? What would you call that? A cage? Fence?
<laughs> I think the Kong is success <laughs> successfully. <laughs> Coming back to get the camera. Do, 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 do. Nori, what did you do? How did that little tiny puppy manage to pull over the whole chair? <laughs> Get down, please, Turk. Get down. Get down. <laughs> Coming back to get the camera. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you. Nice. That's what happens when you stand on logs because you're so small. Next week. You're eating a bit of sausage, mm. but you shouldn't be. I'm going to test it for quality. Right, quality, quality street. Quality control. Quality control, like the Jordies. <laughs> right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Be sensible. Okay. I don't know about Nori, but this is tiring me out. Thank you for letting me go. Go a little, a little treat. That, that sounds like I keep you in prison. <laughs> 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 Most of the time. Click here to subscribe to live in the sky life. Click here to go back to the start of our adventures with our very first episode.